Hello everybody, I'm Dazzling Darren and I'm thrilled to be working with the Imagination Station for the car at Corby Cube to present to you the Dazzling Darren Magic School. Now I've been performing magic for people for over 25 years but I'm really excited that today I'm not just showing you magic but I'm also teaching you how it's done and the best thing is you can join in and learn the tricks to fool your family and friends and to learn the three tricks in the next few minutes you'll just need four things and the best thing is you can probably find these things lying around the house now don't worry if you don't have everything you'll only need a couple of things to perform each trick so just join in with the ones that you've got and then watch the video and next time you're out grab the other things so you can learn all of the magic tricks so the four things that you'll need are three beakers you will also need a little bit of tin foil somewhere about the size of an a4 piece of paper will be fine you will also need a rubber band and the last thing that you can grab is a pack of cards. If you've got all those four things, you will be able to perform three amazing magic tricks in just a few minutes time. So let's get going with the first trick, the cups and balls. The cups and balls is an amazing magic trick. It's actually the oldest recorded magic trick in the world. There is evidence of this trick appearing over 5,000 years ago in Egypt. And I'm gonna show you a version now, and then I'm gonna teach you a version, all right? So, in a second, we will learn how to do this and we will use our tin foil. We're gonna make it into some small balls. I've already done that over here. So, here's a trick, and it is a trick that requires one, two, three tin foil balls, and also uh, one, two, three cups. Now, the idea of these, this trick is very simple. We're gonna make one ball penetrate through one of the cups. All you gotta do is this. Take one ball, place it on top of one of the cups. Cover that cup with the two other cups. Click your fingers and that first ball will go through the yellow cup and it will go right down there through to the table. Now I've made this on two cameras so you can see both my head and the table very, very easily. Let's do this again. Let's place the three cups down and try it with a second ball. We'll take the second ball, place it on top of the cup, cover that cup with the other two cups, click our fingers and the first ball will pass through that cup and join its friend on the table, meaning that two balls are now on the table. Let's try it with the last ball. Let's place these three cups down on the table. This time, let's make it doubly difficult. We'll put one extra cup on top of the first cup. Then we'll place the ball and finally, the final cup. And now if we click our fingers, that ball will penetrate not through one cup, but through two cups and join its friend down on the table. And that is the cups and balls trick with one, two, three balls and one, two, three cups. <laughs> All right, let's get onto the explanation. For this trick, you will need to grab yourselves one, two, three beakers. Now I have used three beakers here that are not the same. Three beakers that I just found in my cupboard and you can do the same as well. Grab yourselves three cups, three beakers, they can be different colours. As long as they can stack on top of each other, you are good to go. And then you will also need to make your foil balls. Now, if you don't have any tin foil, you can use blue tack, you can also use play-doh, but tin foil works great. And you need to make yourself one, two, three, and here's the secret, four balls. Look, there's the final ball just over there. Now, this is how it works. You actually use three cups, but you actually use an extra ball. And it's the extra ball that will make this trick work. So grab yourselves one, two, three, four tin foil balls. Now, a good way to do that is to take your tin foil uh, and tear it in half. And this is just rough, it doesn't have to be exact. And then take those two pieces and tear them in half again. That will give you four quarters that are roughly the same size. Then once you've done that, take each piece and screw it into a small little ball. Now, the size of it doesn't really matter as long as the balls are all roughly the same size as each other so that nobody would know that which ball is which. You don't want to have two big ones and two little ones. Uh, get four balls that are roughly the same size. Somewhere about the size of a Malteser would be great, all right? Now, I'll give you a few seconds to do that, and once you've done that, you will have yourself four balls and three cups. And that is how this trick works. So to start, we're gonna hide one of the balls 
inside one of the cups. So I will place one ball inside the middle cup like so, and then I will stack those uh, cups together. So we've now got three cups and inside the middle cup, there is an extra ball. And that's how this works. And then you can take the other three balls, place them in the top cup and you are all set to go. First things first, show everybody that you've got three balls and three cups. You can tip out the balls, just like so, and lay them out, leave a bit of a gap in between them, that will really help, all right? Something that you could probably get your hand in between, that will really help. And then the three cups, you can pop them behind each ball. Now what I did there is I placed this cup down at a speed that wasn't too fast, that wasn't too slow. Let me show you what happens if you do it too slow, all right? If you do it too slow, this will happen, the ball will drop out. Now if you do it too fast, it might look a little bit obvious, all right? So have a little bit of a practice, taking the three cups and placing them onto the table face down, nice and steady, so that just fast enough so that the ball doesn't fall out. When you've done that, you're ready to start. You've got your three cups and then your three balls. Take any ball, it doesn't matter, and place it on top of the middle cup. Now remember, the extra ball is already under that cup. Then you've got to place the other two cups on top and now, do something magical. I like to click my fingers, but if you can't click your fingers, you could clap your hands, you could wave your hands over the cup, or you could say a magic word, abracadabra, or you can make your own magic word up, why not do that? And when you've done that, take the three cups away and show that the first ball has gone through to the table. Now, we're in a position where the first ball has gone through to the table and the secret ball is once again in that middle cup. So, you just gotta repeat yourself. Now the only thing to remember this time is you've gotta take this cup in the middle and place the mouth of the cup over this ball. Watch me first, then have a go at it yourself. So one cup like that, and then the second cup like that, and the third cup like that. And remember, the cup that had the sneaky extra ball in goes on top of the one that was already on the table. So now we've already got two on the table. Now take your second ball, place it on top of the cup like so, cover it up, Click your fingers and you will find that the second ball joins the first ball on the table. And remember, once again, we've got the extra ball that is now inside the middle cup. We're gonna do the same again. So make sure you put this cup down to join these two on the table like so. And now we can say that we're gonna make it extra difficult. Because we don't have to repeat it again, we can place one cup on top like so. That makes it doubly difficult. Now, place your ball on the two cups Place the other cup just on top like so, click your fingers, wave your hands, say your magic word, and reveal that the trick is over with one, two, three balls, and one, two, three cups. Now the only thing you've got to make sure is that nobody looks under this cup because it has the extra ball. So you might not even want to turn them over at all. You could just leave them like that and show them that they have got the three balls and they've all penetrated through. So that is the cups and balls. That's the first trick that we're going to learn today. And remember, if you're stuck, you can pause this video or you can go back and rewind it. You can watch it again and you will be able to learn the oldest trick in the world. All right, we're now going to come to a trick called the jumping rubber band. For the jumping rubber band, yes, you've guessed it, this is the way you will need your rubber band. And it is super simple, uh, but it's an amazing trick nonetheless. I'll show you it and then I'll teach you exactly how it's done. All you gotta do is take your rubber band and we're gonna make it jump from two fingers here to the other two fingers here, look. Um, these two fingers here, the rubber band will jump to these two fingers here. Let me show you how this works, watch. I blow and that rubber band jumps from those two to those two. <laughs> it's cool, right? Did you see it? Look, let me show you again. You take the rubber band and it will jump by magic from these two fingers to these two fingers. Watch. Check that out. Cool, right? Do you want to learn it? Well, let's learn it now. So, all you need is a rubber band and I will try and show you on this uh, camera here uh, how, exactly how this works from the back. All right, see the trick that you see from the front and the trick that you see from the back in this case are two very different tricks. Let me show you, all right? So, to start, you actually do put the rubber band around your first and second fingers, all right? So you can place that rubber band around your first and second fingers. Now, it doesn't matter which rubber band you use. This one is quite a small one. You can use a bigger one, all right? If you use a bigger one, it might just uh, be loose around your fingers a bit. So if you can find a small one, something that just fits around your fingers, that is great. That works just well, all right? Now, 
this is what people see from the front. From the back, they're gonna see something different. So let me turn my hand over, all right? Let me show you this working, and then you can have a practice at this, all right? As I pull my uh, uh, rubber band back like this, I'm gonna curl my fingers, but I'm actually gonna curl all four fingers into the rubber band. So I'm gonna pull the rubber band like this, curl all four fingers and make sure they all go into the rubber band, and then let the rubber band go on all four fingers. So from the front, you can see that the rubber band is around two fingers. From the back, the rubber band is around four fingers. And let me show you that how you would actually do it. The rubber band like that is in front of uh, two fingers. Uh, and then from the back, you can clearly see that it's around four fingers. When you've got that, all you have to do then is open your fingers. I'll try and do this slow so you can see it go across. But even in slow motion, sometimes it's imperceptible to the eye. Have a look. Did you see that? All I did is open my fingers and doing that made the rubber band jump from these two fingers to these two fingers. So let me show you once again. You take the rubber band and it goes over your uh, first two fingers like so. As you lift them up to the audience, you curl your fingers in like so. And then as you open up your fingers, it jumps across. And that is the jumping rubber band. Hope you have fun with that. It's an amazing trick that you can learn and practice and it requires just a single rubber band. Now, the last trick we're gonna to learn today is a card trick and it is called the fastest trick in the world. So for this trick, you can grab your cards um, and we're gonna learn a miracle. And the miracle requires just two cards. We're gonna use a six and a nine. We're going to use the rest of the cards as well, but it works with the six and a nine. Now, if you have somebody in the room with you, you can ask them to put those cards anywhere they like. I will demonstrate that by taking these cards and just putting them in random places inside the pack. And you can see that those cards are going into different places in the pack, and I will push them in like so. Now, I am going to find both of those cards in less than one second. Watch very carefully. Here we go. Did you miss it? And sure enough, I've gone through the back, the pack, and in one second, I have found the two cards, the black six and the black nine. Now, that is the fastest trick in the world, and I'm gonna show you how it works. To make this trick work, you need not just one six and nine, but also two sixes and nines. So go through your pack of cards that you should have and grab yourselves both black sixes and both black nines. And that's how it works. You are gonna put one black six and one black nine into the pack and you're gonna find the other black six and other black nine. And when I say you're gonna find them, here's the secret, you already know where they are. So, put your cards into pairs and you wanna get the pairs so that the, the suits are opposite. So in a, in a pack of cards you have clubs, hearts, spades and diamonds. We are gonna focus on the clubs and the spades. So grab yourself the six of spades and pop it with the nine of clubs. And then grab yourself the six of clubs and pop it with the nine of spades. Once you've done that, take one of the pairs and it really doesn't matter which one and place one card on top of the pack like so and the other card on the bottom of the pack, like so. So, now you have a pack of cards that's completely random, but at the bottom, you have a six or a nine, and at the top, you have a six or a nine. It doesn't matter which way around. I've got the six at the top here, but it really doesn't matter. Then, all you have to do is very simple. Get somebody to pop the uh, six and nine back in the, in the deck in random locations, all right? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna ask them to put them back anywhere they like. Don't mention that it's the six of clubs and the nine of spades, just say a black six and a black nine. They can now put those cards anywhere they like because they are not the ones that you are gonna find. Once you've closed the pack up, you're ready to do the sneaky magic bit. And this is the really exciting bit that's a lot of fun to practice. Here's what you gotta do. You gotta take your thumb and your finger and place them on top and bottom of the pack. Now, because they are naturally a little bit sticky, when you hold the cards like this and throw them to your other hand, because of the friction that is caused by your thumb and your finger, they will hold back two cards and throw the rest to the table. Now, I, when I did it, you may have seen me that I caught the cards like this. To practice, here's what I want you to do. I want you to put your hand like this and just throw the cards at your hand. Don't worry about catching the cards, all right? You can do that later on. Just worry about holding the cards with your thumb and finger like that, throwing the cards and keeping these two back. They are the important ones. 
Then, once you've practiced that a little bit, have a go at trying to catch the cards. Now, I'll be honest with you, I've practiced this a lot, so you probably will drop them. But don't worry about that. You can practice and practice until you can catch the cards like so, and you can turn over the six and nine and show them the fastest trick in the world. Now, it will take a little bit of practice because all magic does. And, and that's really often how the great magicians become great because they practice and practice and practice. And that's what I want you to do with the three tricks that you've learned today. I've been Dazzling Darren. It's been an absolute pleasure to join the Imagination Station and teach you three amazing magic tricks. I hope you have a lot of fun with those and I hope that you will practice and never reveal the secrets. See you later on.